the box. Hi, it's Brandon from Audio Video Unlimited and we're going to talk about control for home automation or smart home technology. So obviously we're hiding here in the back of uh, the AVU head office warehouse and what I'm back here for is that I wanted to show you some of these pieces when they're not integrated into your house, when they're not built into a beautiful shiny display and exactly what's going on behind the scenes because I think that the biggest concern that people have when we start talking about custom home automation is that we're going to show up at their house with a sledgehammer and start ripping the walls open to run wires and well Wi-Fi and wireless technologies have been around for a while now and all of this stuff actually runs on wireless tech so very little electrical work needs to be done usually the only time our installers are pulling wires is if you want to put power blinds and you don't have power blinds or you're going to need to run you know a video camera somewhere and it needs power and you haven't previously had surveillance systems <laughs> installed in your house in the past obviously you're going to need to run electricity you know you need the, the sparks where you need the sparks and that's just the way it's got to go. But as far as the actual control side, very, very little. In fact, we've recently installed a system into a 100-year-old heritage home where they were extremely concerned about us not running things into the walls, and so we didn't. There's usually an option to, to move totally away. Um, control 4 is a system we like to use because it integrates so well with so many other technologies they've been in the market for so long. In fact, I think I originally heard about it from like Oprah's favorite things back in the 90s. So they've, they've been around a while. So first thing I wanted to show you was one of the more complex wall control. If you're going to go with physical controls now, obviously control 4 is all about using your smartphone or a tablet to control things through a visual inter interface. But it's always good to have those physical tactile switches on the wall so you know where they are if you've you know, misplaced your phone or dropped the remote. Um, so these are backlit when they're installed. So you can see them in the dark, which is kind of neat. And also you can see this one is a rather complex one. It's got a lot of different functions built into it. And in the back, oh, look at that. No fancy wiring required. Just your standard ground wire, black and white, like you'll find in most outlets. Um, very, very simple installation. It goes into a standard receptacle box. So when we do the installation, there's there's no farting around weirdness. We just pull off the switch that's previously there, maybe controlling the lights in that room, and install one of these, and suddenly you have a whole bunch more functionality. And these things run on their own wireless network. It's called a Zigbee network. And the more of them you end up integrating in your house, that stronger that mesh network becomes because each one is a broadcaster and a receiver so they talk to each other and they talk to the base station which is kind of neat so if you find that there's not quite enough reception in some piece of your house you might go hey I'll just add an extra little piece of functionality and the reception goes up to boot which is fun. Uh, the other thing that you might want to see is the other end of things where the magic starts happening where you're like dimming your light this is a, a dimmer box uh, these also come in just a switch variety which is slightly less expensive and as you can see that this requires absolutely no special wiring that literally plugs into the socket that's already there on your wall there's your two outputs and there on the top you can see indicator lights for making sure that everything's got power the way it should have power and a little screw to retain it so it doesn't keep falling out of your wall these are already there on most of your receptacle boxes right at the very top so you just take that receptacle screw out and you put it back in in this one with this plugged in Bob's your uncle ready to go once again, using that Zigbee mesh network. I'll show you the, uh, the simple home theater control box here too, which is kind of fun. People think these things are huge in the pictures. They're not. Very small. So this slots right into your home theater cabinet, or maybe you know we glue it right to the back of your TV and hide it, or on the wall somewhere. You can get pretty sneaky with these kinds of things. It runs off wireless network antennas, Wi-Fi, the Zigbee network all comes through this. You have the option to go with an ethernet connection if you want a solid connection, if you have that available at that point. Sometimes in home theater rooms you already have that. And of course the best connection you can possibly have to your media is always through ethernet. Um, and this has an HDMI out, HDMI out on it, a USB port for upgrading the software inside the box. And then a few uh, serial and IRs on the back here as well as, as power. But you know, compared to say your Blu-ray player that's already sitting in there, this thing's gonna serve that media anyways. And I bet you this is a lot smaller. So you replace one thing with one thing that's even tinier. You might not even need that AV cabinet anymore. Other people choose to hide these in a closet because the other thing is controlling this, obviously through a wireless control system, 
you don't need to point your infrared remote at it. It's not using infrared. So it can be hidden anywhere in your house if you don't want to look at it at all. That's kind of cool. And then the other piece here that we have that's a you know common add-on to the system is giving you audio control. So if you have a really fancy audio system in your house, or even a not that fancy audio system in your house, this pumps music into your amplifier. So you can use a basic amplifier and you can use this, serve all your media through the Control 4 system, load all your CDs onto a computer somewhere, or just stream it wirelessly like you would with a standard Sonos system, and out comes music. Ethernet port or Wi-Fi, I believe. So that's pretty cool. And obviously very tiny compared to the way you might be serving your music now. Very, very, very small and very, very convenient to put in and stash away if you just want to have the speakers or even if you don't want to have any speakers at all and you've previously mounted them in the walls or the ceiling. That and this might sit hidden somewhere or they could be close to the source. Doesn't much matter to us, it's more about your preference. So the next thing we're going to go do is we're going to go walk out to the, the display that we have in the store where you can see some of this stuff in operation and what the interface looks like because it's not that difficult to use and certainly if you're struggling with say a universal remote control that doesn't always turn everything on the way you were hoping that it would and you're not enjoying that experience this works a lot smoother all right so we were just in the back looking at the components and learning about how this stuff is all wireless and then i thought i'd show you a little bit of a demo of what the actual interfaces look like so this is when it's in sleep mode you can see it's just displaying the time and the date you can display a couple other things temperature stuff like that you've got it hooked up as well once you touch it obviously the panel comes to life you have your whole sec section of options like security we can change there's a television over here that you can't see change the channel on that change your comfort settings that would be like your HVAC controls, um, the actual settings on the programming itself. Lighting's kind of fun because our store is actually wired up on Control 4. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the entry hall and I'll just dim the primary light. You should see it go pretty dark there. And it's very quick to react and then bring it back up. Uh, if you wanted to listen to music, that's all available through here. So any of your streaming sources as well as you could set up your library to stream through this. So we could take all of your physical media that you have, put it on a hard drive hooked up to the, and here is that control station again, feed it through there and then you have access to all of your media without having to have a disc player or CDs kicking around, which is kind of fun. You can also go back one more step here and we'll show you what the locks look like for your front doors, They're pretty easy to operate. So locks and sensors, it's just a touch screen interface. Uh, I believe the Yale is this one. It's got a low battery, so you'll actually hear it give you a warning. Low battery. There you go, that's that lock. And then the quick set Zigbee lock is, is this one here. The other thing that's really interesting is we have cameras in the store, so let's take a look at those. Here is us and the front entry. Yeah, you can see the back of my head there. It's kind of fun. Anyways, that's the, the ease of use of one of these systems. It's extremely intuitive and straightforward. That combined with how easy it is to get into your house and uh, low impact it can be on your drywall, a lot of people consider running these in their homes. And you can get started with a Control 4 system for somewhere around 2,500 bucks. So it's comparable to a introductory level home theater package. You don't have to break the bank to do this, we would never call it cheap or inexpensive because it isn't that, but it's also not prohibitively expensive. We hope you've enjoyed our tour of the Control 4 format, the equipment and the technology behind it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon for another tech tour.